All right, everybody. Welcome to Mondays with Mike. Hey, it's Monday, July 3rd. You know what that means. Tomorrow's the 4th of July, also known as Independence Day. So I hope you all had a great weekend. Um, let's see. Mine, I don't remember what happened. All I know is uh, I had to uh, spend uh, all day yesterday like exercising to make up for all the bad food that I've been eating. So that was half my weekend. Uh, but anyway, hope you hope you had a great one. So today, um, I don't. I'm running so short on time. I'm telling you, Mondays are just slam packed for me. So it's sometimes it's hard to. Maybe I should make it like Wednesdays with Mike. Anyway, so three things that I'm going to uh, talk to you about today. One is something just uh, cute and amusing that I came across regarding the atmosphere. So stay tuned for that one. It's you know. Something to share with the kids, you know, and uh, another one is the big pattern change is going to be taking place this week right here in Texas. And then how long that's going to last. And then finally, uh, I have a doom and gloom end of the world scenario for you. Fresh from science. So I want to start off with this. So get your thinking cap on or like I open your mind. And here we go. I want to show you something. Are you ready? Here we go. What do you see here? Hmm. This is a map of the uh, SAL or the Saharan air layer. Basically shows us where the dust is coming off the west coast of Africa. So Africa's on the right-hand side of your screen and South America is on the bottom part of your screen. And what do you see? I'm, I don't want to tell you what I see yet. I want to pause the video now, maybe see what anybody else in the room thinks this is. Okay, well, I'll tell you what I see right away. I see a bird. Don't you see the bird? It's like a dove. See, there's his eyes, and uh, there's his beak, and his body or her body, and then, you know, there's the wing coming down like this. It's a beautiful dove, and then the dove may, this may even be like a baby dove, like, I don't know what you call them, chicks, I guess, down here, that she's feeding. I don't know. So I said to myself today, I said, well, when I look at the tropics, you know, let me look up the Saharan air layer, and... You know, see what the status of the dust is across the Atlantic, which you can see is ext extensive. And then I said, well, it's a dove. So anyway, that kind of. There you go. It doesn't take that much to amuse me, honestly, sometimes. Uh, let's see. Um, OK, so we're going through a bit of a pattern change here. You know, we went through 24. 24 consecutive days of above average high temperatures here in Houston. Today is probably going to make day number 25 of above average temperatures. But as you probably noticed yesterday, we had some thunderstorms, actually some pretty tough thunderstorms. And today I think we'll probably have a few more. And then there's going to be another chance for some scattered thunderstorms on the 4th of July. Most likely they will be fading out before fireworks time. Uh, and then for the rest of the week, an even better chance for seeing rain, maybe a few heavy downpours Wednesday and Thursday. And then, uh, well, I don't want to put the cart before the horse here because I'll share that with you in just a minute. Um, in addition to the bird on the Saharan air layer, I wanted to give you an update on the drought. We're not in a drought, so this isn't necessarily a drought update, but across the state of Texas, there is an extensive drought. Uh, over here off to the west of Austin, where it's actually one of the deepest droughts in the entire country. But I wanted, wanted to show you here is that we are seeing more yellow uh, here on the map of, uh, of our area in Texas. Not so much in Harris County, but um, Fort Bend and Brazoria and Galveston and Matagorda and Wharton counties and then areas off toward the south were classified as being abnormally warm. So technically that's called D0. I didn't mean to say abnormally warm. I meant abnormally dry. That puts us at D0. So the drought conditions run from D0 to D4. D4, drought four, would be the worst of the worst. And D0 just means you're kind of, you're, you're slipping into a potential drought if you don't get any rain soon. So 
we are getting though. I know my grass. I don't know about yours. Is I is getting really crunchy, starting to get kind of brown. I mean, a lot of the vegetation is starting to get pretty dried out. And of course, this time of the year, when it doesn't rain for a while, everything's going to dry out faster because it's so hot. Obviously, or you know, heat stressed vegetation is going to start to die and all that. So why why am I telling you this? Well, because everybody's going to be setting off sparklers and and uh, Roman candles and all that stuff for the Fourth of July. I won't be, but I know a lot of people are. Uh, of course, it is not legal in the city limits of Houston, uh, but you know a lot of you enjoy doing that. And if you do, especially if you live out in in a rural area that hasn't gotten rain recently, uh, we don't want to start any fires. And so just be aware of that. Uh, you know, hopefully you got some rain yesterday. Hopefully maybe you'll get a little bit of rain today. It'll make the ground, you know, a little wetter and so forth. And so it won't be as much of a dire situation, but I just want everybody to just be aware of that and just be careful. So let's talk about what is uh, coming our way. So um, I want to show you this. So this is the GFS model, which is our American model, right? And let me move myself over here. So what we're looking at here is, uh, let me hit rewind. So let's go all the way back to last week. And when we rewind all the way back to last week, um, we can see right there. Okay, so this is, I've hit rewind on this model. We're back at last Thursday. And what you'll see here is right in the middle of the screen, you see that orange circular area, or that's, I don't even know what color that is. It's like a pinkish tan. Anyway, right there in the middle, that was the heat dome. That's what was sitting right on top of us. That's why we were so hot for such a long time, upper 90s to around 100 every day. We had a couple of record highs at Hobby Airport. We had heat advisories and and uh, excessive heat warnings every day for a couple of weeks. So that is was sort of the paradigm for last week and the week before. But now, as we take a look at what's happening right now, uh, it is completely different. Um, let me click on the latest uh, model run, and you'll see that everything is completely different. So we no longer have that big uh, red area or orange area on top of us. In fact, we have this little blue here off to our north, which means that there's a dip in the jet stream. And so that means that the heat dome is gone. Doesn't mean we're not going to be hot. Of course, we're going to be hot. But the heat dome is gone which will open up the opportunity for us to see some rain and, and things like that. But how long is it going to last, you may be asking? And the answer is not that long. So we're taking a look at today. So as we take a look at today, and then finally, what we're going to look for is for this orange area to work its way back in. And you'll see that here Friday. Now we're into Saturday. And now we're into Sunday. And look at that. By Sunday, it is back. And that means, in fact, by Monday, Tuesday, where I'm skipping ahead here, you see how that orange area stays over us for a long, long time. What that means is that after we go through about four days of a pretty good chance for rain and somewhat lower temperatures, we are going to be back in the thick of it next week. I think there's a good chance that we're going to be uh, experiencing triple digits for much of next week. Finally, uh, I'll leave you with this. I came across a, a great article to uh, really just like if you're if you're feeling a little bit down in the dumps, read this and you'll feel so much better um, from live science. Catastrophic climate doom loops could start in just 15 years, new study warns. So a team of scientists out of the United Kingdom uh, issued a um, or published a paper in the journal Nature, which is like one of the biggest journals, you know, most important journals in the world. And they say that we may be reaching a tipping point. Basically, that's going to cause the collapse of the Greenland ice sheet and transform the Amazon rainforest into a dry savanna. So I'll have more on that a little later. But anyway, so if you need something to look forward to in life, there you go. So anyway, thanks for joining me here for Mondays with Mike. I really appreciate it very much. Um, if you would, uh, give it a like and leave me a comment. A polite comment would be terrific. Get ready to do the news at noon with the great Heather Sullivan. So I got to put my show together here and try to put something together that makes sense. <laughs> See you next week.